sometimes to progress in anything in life, you have to be willing to take a risk. And at Plump Jack Cade and Odette, we are willing to take a risk if it really benefits the overall cause, which is making great wine. As we started bottling with screw caps and debuted the uh, 1997 Plump Jack Reserve Cabernet half screw cap, half cork finished at the Naff Valley Wine Auction, I've got comments from fellow vintners, and it was interesting. There was really a break between supporters um, and detractors. And most of the supporters were ironically from the production side. The winemakers knew that this was a solution to a problem. It wasn't 100% embraced, but really it was 50-50. Screw caps are fantastic. With a screw cap, you're getting something that is very consistent, uh, no influence of TCA, and bottle uniformity throughout the entire lot. It's easy. I can screw it off, take a drink, screw it back on, <laughs> and continue my hunting. I think they are the best way to ensure that every single bottle that you open as a consumer is exactly as the winemaker intended. When we serve bottles at the table in the restaurant, we don't make a remark about the fact that it's a screw cap closure. In this one particular table, I opened the bottle and I was talking to the gentleman about the wine and he never noticed that it was a screw cap. I poured the bottle and that's when he saw that it was a screw cap and he said, you know, if you had told me that was a screw cap bottle, I would have never accepted it. That's really good wine. And I said, well, that's the point anyway. The wine in the bottle is what matters. So we made the decision with the 1997 Plump Jack Reserve Cabernet to bottle half of it in cork finish, half in screw cap finish. This way the consumer could actually take the bottles home and they could see how they age. They could do a side-by-side -side comparison for themselves and really understand what we were trying to do, which is capture and, and preserve what we made in the winery and have that translate all the way to the consumer in bottle. The first luxury brand uh, really from around the world to take this chance, take this risk of bottling uh, half and half. Uh, my friends in the marketing departments at wineries, the salespeople, uh, were petrified. They thought that um, screw caps were an inexpensive closure and everything that went along with bottling with screw caps would dilute luxury wine branding and marketing. I've had some people say, well, you know, screw cap is cheap, but really we're saying, no, it's fantastic quality in the bottle. I think you have a, a cultural, uh, social issue, uh, and I think you have an image issue. I think we have a, a new generation, a younger generation, growing up with screw caps around them. So I think that acceptance is already there. For them, it's more about what's in the bottle rather than, than the type of closure that it is. Over the years, I've seen a really big step in the right direction towards consumer acceptance. People are finally coming to the understanding that wines can age under screw caps as well. So it's great for red wines, not only white wines. I've had the opportunity to try some of our older vintages of Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon under both cork and screw cap, and I really found that both wines have aged comparably. I've drank lots of the screw cap bottles, and every bottle's been awesome. In addition to doing our own internal experiment, in-house experiment, we engaged with the University of California, Davis, one of the great winemaking schools of the world, and we asked them to do an experiment as well. Our study is interesting in that we're not directly comparing one closure with another, but we're looking at three different closures and looking at the variation of each of those closure types. Natural cork, synthetic cork, and screw cap and studies their variability over time and how that impacts the wine. The key question is, can anyone taste the difference between the darkest bottles and the lightest bottles? And that would answer the question, can bottle-to-bottle -bottle variation actually affect the taste of the wine from the consumer's perspective? I somewhat assume that people would say, because you were the first, you were the innovators, you would say that screw caps are better. We suspect it'll take another 10 to 15 years to really come to any solid conclusion whether cork ages better than screw cap or screw cap ages better than cork. But today we have a choice between closures. For me as a winemaker, I want to preserve all that effort that went into making that wine. For something to come in between that uh, and the finished product uh, is very detrimental. For me, I just prefer to make sure that every last bottle that reaches our fans and our consumers is exactly as I intended it to be. We're very happy with the way the screw cap and the cork have been showing our wines.
Before we bottled our Plump Jack Reserve Cabernet with screw caps, there was no choice. There was corks or there was corks. Now today, you have the choice of, of screw caps, corks, synthetics, or glass closures. I don't think there is any end point when you're in the winemaking business. It's an ongoing, ever-evolving process for us. We have to respect history, tradition, but we have to embrace change in the wine industry. With Plump Jack Estate, Kate Estate, and our new project, the Odette Estate in the Stags Leap District, fully established, we will continue to challenge ourselves as grape growers, as winemakers. Part of our philosophy is every year uh, we need to raise the bar in the vineyards, in the winery, and in packaging to continue to enhance the quality and the wines from our three estate properties.